Hey everyone, it's Justin from Number Crunch Nerds. In this video, we are going to do some financial statement analysis on the Mullen Automotive Form 10Q, specifically focusing on the six months ending March 31st, 2023. Disclaimer, this video is an exercise in doing financial statement analysis, digging into the details and really seeing what is going on in the financials. This video is not a solicitation to buy, sell, or trade any security. With that said, let's talk about the agenda for today's video. Here is what I'm going to cover specifically. Number one, the status of the 150 million convertible notes. Number two, the status of the preferred C warrants. Number three, the status of the preferred D warrants. Number four, status of the Kiantu USA warrants. Status of the amended ANR note, number five. Number six, the ELMS asset acquisition, and then number seven, uh, R&D spend. If you enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe so you, I will know you want to see more content like this. Let's get started. We're going to start with number one, with 150 million convertible note. So on November the 15th, 2022, they issued a convertible note for $150 million. On November the 21st, principal of 59 million was converted into 8.83 million shares. Now, we are going to track everything we're talking about. We're going to track it right here on the equity statement. This is our home base for this video, okay? So that was 8.83 million shares, and we're going to cover that one right here. This was the conversion of part of the $150 million note into 8.83 million shares. Shares issued for convertible notes, that's this number right here, that's the first part. Let's go back to the 150 million convertible. Okay, then during February 2023, the remaining balance of the notes, uh, as well as accrued interest, was converted by the holders into 12.385 million shares. So let's go back to here Let's grab another arrow and we're going to put it right here. 12.385 million right here. Here was the second portion of the note getting converted. So it says the remaining balance of the notes was converted. So this 150 million note is gone as of March 31st, 2023. The entire note is gone. It was established in November 15th, uh, 2022, and by this date, which is the balance sheet date in question, uh, that note is gone, all right? And it has con been converted into shares in these two tranches, 8.8 .8 million and 12.3 million, which we saw right here and right here, okay? So this note is gone, and we can also confirm that by looking at the balance sheet detail here. The balance sheet detail shows this is the total amount of debt that was outstanding on the balance sheet at September the 30th, 2022, $9 million. At March 31st, 2023, it's now $7 million. There is no uh, convertible note appearing here. This convertible note is not here. It's not here. It came and went all within this six month period. So this convertible note is gone. It's been converted into these number of shares. Let's go to the next item on the agenda, which is the C warrants. All right, so the preferred C warrants. During the quarter ended December 31st, 2022, a certain number of the preferred C warrants that remained outstanding have been fully exercised, okay? So the preferred C warrants are gone as of the end of 2022. So they're most certainly gone as of the end of March 31st, 2023, which is the balance sheet date in question. The footnote detail here does not actually give a number of shares that this was converted into. However, this is a C share warrant conversion when we go over here and it occurred in, um, in the uh, previous quarter, in the quarter ended December 31st, 2022. So if we go back to the equity statement and we go up here. This is the first quarter in question. The quarter ended uh, December 31st, 2022. Here is the cashless uh, warrant exercise for C shares right there. So we're going to take 
an arrow here and we're going to note that we've covered this one. That was the conversion of uh, class C, preferred C warrants into common stock. Uh, and all of the C warrants are gone as of this date right here. So the convertible note is gone. The C warrants are gone. We've covered that. Now on the D warrants, okay, the D warrants actually does provide a number in the footnote detail, which is helpful. It says during the quarter ended December 31st, 2022, all preferred D warrants were exercised on a cashless basis for 9.16 million shares. So let's go back to the equity statement and we're going to find the 9.16, which is right here. So there's our cashless warrant exercise for D shares. What is, what is a cashless warrant exercise? It's just that under a, under a normal warrant exercise, the buyer would, the holder of the warrant would have to bring cash to the table in order to purchase the shares. Under a cashless exercise, what the company does is they just hold back a number of shares that uh, would be equivalent to the amount of cash that the, the, the holder of the warrant would have brought. It helps the, um, the warrant holders with liquidity. That's what a cashless warrant exercise means. So we've covered this one as well. Okay, we're going to cover all of these. All right, we've covered that was the C, uh, the C exercise. This is the D exercise. That was the convertible, the first tranche. This is the convertible, the second tranche. And all of that is gone except, let's go back to the D warrants here. In connection with that $150 million note, all right, there were some warrants issued with that. And those warrants were exercised into common stock except for $3 million, about $3 million that remain as of uh, March 31st, 2023. Okay, so first item is there are 3 million D warrants remaining as of this date. Okay, we said the convertible was gone. We said the C was gone. There's this many D warrants still outstanding. That's what this says. And it also says that a large majority of these warrants were uh, converted into common stock. It doesn't give in this footnote, uh, it doesn't give a number of shares. However, when we go to the equity statement, there was only one cashless warrant exercise that occurred in the quarter between December 31st, 2022 and March 31st, 2023. And that one was right here, right here, 43 million shares. Okay. So that was a cashless warrant exercise. Uh, there is no other warrant exercise listed here in this quarter. Okay. So it has to be this one, even though no number was provided in the footnote detail. So that was the uh, D warrant exercise uh, in the previous quarter. And then this was a warrant exercise related to warrants issued in conjunction with this convertible note. And there's 3 million still outstanding. Okay. I don't know if these are actually classified as D warrants, but there are 3 million warrants outstanding related to this convertible note. Okay. That's what this says right here. All right, so we covered the convertible, we covered the C warrants, we covered the D warrants, the Kiantu warrants, Kiantu USA. All right, it says, um, as it was expected, the company may not have sufficient, a sufficient number of authorized shares of common stock available for the issuance during the term of the contract. The Kiantu warrants were recognized at fair value on inception of 6.8 million, and then they were marked, marked to market. Um, up to 5.6 million on March 31st. As far as I can tell, these are still outstanding. I don't see any evidence to the contrary in the financial statements that, that these warrants have been exercised. I believe these Kiantu warrants valued at 5.6 million as of March 31st, 2023 are still uh, outstanding. So you have this 3 million of warrants here related to that convertible item. And then these warrants, I believe, are still outstanding as well right here. Okay, let's go now to the AR note. Okay, this is the drawbridge and amended AR note with uh, SOSA or SOUSA. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Either way, here's what happened a new convertible note payable with a face value of 12.9 million uh, and 920,000 common shares were issued under this, uh, this arrangement. 
right here. So let's, let's uh, take care of this 920 shares. We're gonna go to the equity statement. We're going to go up here. I'm gonna grab another arrow and I'm going to find the 920, which is right there. That's the 920 uh, shares issued to extinguish a penalty, All right? There was some kind of uh, penalty here related to, um, there was an obligation to compensate for the losses of fair, mar uh, market value decline in this arrangement. So 920,000 shares were issued related to that. And then down here, uh, this note having a face value of 12.9 million plus the uh, debt premium and accrued interest, et cetera, et cetera, was converted into uh, 2.48 million shares. So this one is gone as well. This one has been completely converted into 2.481 million shares. So let's go back and see if we can find that one. I'm gonna make a new arrow here and it's right here. This is the shares issued to settle the note payable. All right, so that's that one right there. So we've covered all these three right here. We've covered these, we've covered this, we've covered this. All right, if you look on the list here of other shares that became outstanding, the ones that I've put a blue box around, this is um, employee comp. This is stock comp for executives and employees. And so is all of this, as well as some related to consultants. You have consultants, employees, officers, and directors. That's what all these shares right here are for. And that's what this 4.5 million is for right here. So uh, the convertible is gone. The C warrants are gone. There's a little bit here related to that convertible. Um, and there's these warrants outstanding. This note is gone. All of that has been converted. We've, con we've covered all of that. The only things left on here, this number is too small for me to worry about. This number is too small for me to worry about. I'm not going to mess with that. This number, 3.1 million surplus common stock issued on cashless warrant exercise. I don't see any detail in this particular 10Q on what this relates to. This is the only instance I found where this uh, is even mentioned. So it must relate to one of these uh, cashless warrant exercises. It's a relatively small number, 3 million, compared to some of these much larger numbers that we've covered. So. It is what it is. I don't have any more detail to give you on this particular one. So other than that one, we've covered all of these between the convertible CD and the, uh, actually the Chianti warrants are just outstanding. The convertible CD and the AR note has all been converted and that's all listed right here. All right, so uh, there's been, there was a fair amount of cash raised in particular the 150 in convertible. Uh, it's all been converted to equity at this point. So the question now is, what are the big ticket items that the company's been doing with this money during this six month period? And the first one we're gonna start with is the uh, ELMS acquisition, the Electric Last Mile Solutions acquisition, where what was acquired, there was an acquisition price of $105 million, and they took on $10 million in vendor payables. Uh, this was, you know, payables from the previous owner of this, uh, of this, of these assets. So net purchase of about 95 million. And what was included, they purchased a factory in Mishawaka capable of producing 50,000 vehicles a year, some intellectual property, inventory, and all of the uh, equipment and so forth that is inside of the uh, facility there. So it sounds to me like uh, it appears that they are Moving forward with their business plans based on this, they have purchased a factory uh, to start uh, or increase the production here of 50,000 vehicles. So that's based on what's uh, the big ticket items in the financial statements for this period. This was one of the largest expenditures uh, that the money, this money that was raised here, this 150 million, uh, it went to this. This is, this is where it went, purchasing all of the assets. One nice thing to notice here, this was an asset acquisition there's no goodwill, so that's uh, that's a positive thing. You don't you typically want to see as little goodwill as possible in uh, in the acquisition, and in an acquisition of assets, you would not see that. So there isn't any. We have land, buildings, and site improvements, equipment, uh, identified intangible assets, which is not goodwill, and in inventory. So all of the identifiable assets came to 105 million dollars, which was uh, the purchase price before. 
the assumption of the $10 million in liabilities. All right, they do have goodwill on the books of $92 million, but that relates to a previous acquisition right here. That does not relate to this, this particular acquisition uh, in Mishawaka. So that's one of the, that's one of the big ticket items that's been, uh, that they've been working on. And the other one uh, from the financial statements, it appears that R&D spend uh, has increased. We have uh, 2.3 million R&D spend in the six months ended March 31st of the previous year. That's up to 29.1 million R&D spend uh, in, this, in, in the current six months ended March 31st, 2023. That's a, over a 1,000% increase in R&D spend. So it is, you know, I, I can see an argument where that could be viewed as a positive uh, thing if uh, an investor believes in the company's uh, prospects and, and products and, and what they're working on, then I would, I would believe that they would view this positively as increasing your R&D spend for a pre-revenue company would be a step in the right direction to producing the uh, products that, that you desire, desire to make. So, and of course, the ELMS acquisition provides a new factory setting uh, for all of that. So there's um, a lot of these uh, convertible items and warrants and so forth have been cleaned up for the most part, it appears. Uh, it did take a fair amount of... Um, uh, issuance of common stock, as you can see, as we went through all of these in order to arrive there. But at this point, that appears to be complete, at least as of March 31st, 2023. Uh, there is a new factory getting ready to be in place and an increase in R&D spend. So, you know, there are there are positives and there are negatives to consider. And uh, that is the that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more detailed analysis of Mullen as well as other, uh, other companies. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.